Welcome gamers to Combat Mission Battle for Normandy. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome. Uh, you're thinking, why are you playing a game that is 12 years old? <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I'm telling you why, because it's Game Engine 4. And uh, so it's not actually 12 years old. The games itself, when you're looking at the Combat Mission games, it's very important to know um, like where it's come from and w where the game engine currently is. The game engine you can see down through here is Game Engine 4. Now, that uh, means that there's a lot of differences from when the game first actually released. So the game itself essentially gives you scenarios it gives you um, orders of battle, like for the different types of troops. It gives you structure around those particular troops. But the game engine is actually how the game is played. And so that's really, when you're playing a combat mission game, you are combining the pack, the Battle for Normandy, with the game engine. And so very, very, very different game than when it first launched. So um, so that's, that's one big, big change. That's one thing we're doing. Also, this is the Steam version. So... Um, so Battlefront, the group that put together Combat Mission, are now working in conjunction with Matrix and Slytherin games to then bring it to Steam. And part of that that they bring is, you can see it's version 4.04, Steam. It's the Steam version actually also has Slytherin's sort of proprietary play-by-email system, which sort of automates the play-by-email. So if you are wanting to play multiplayer games, it just broadens this scope for you to then play multiplayer with a bigger gaming community. So if you're a, um, a diehard of the Combat Mission games, then, um, then that's sort of what's going on. Now, if you have the Battlefront keys for the game and, um, and you're wanting to get the Steam version, what you need to do is you need to go to the Matrix Game Store. Uh, if you don't already have a registration with them, then just register it with them and then, then um, essentially register your Battlefront keys to then get an upgrade to the Matrix version of the game, which is this, this current version. And then from there, you can then redeem it to get a Steam version. A bit convoluted, but you can get your Battlefront versions of the game across. Also, when the game does release, and I'm recording this just before release, but when it does release, it's coming with all of the DLCs for the Battle for Normandy. So you've got the Commonwealth Forces, you've got the sort of like the, the battle pack in through here, you've got the extra vehicles, and you've got the, the, um, the, the parachute companies. I forget what that one's actually called. But anyway, that's the, the, the four different DLCs that come with it as well have also then been brought across into this version. So, uh, of course, you need to purchase them separately if you do want to have them. But if you've got them as part of your... Um, your Battlefront uh, kit, I'm assuming you can just sort of bring them across as well. I couldn't find, I had a quick look to see if I could find the DLCs listed in the Matrix store, and I couldn't find the DLCs, but it's before launch, so I'm guessing that that would be the case. Again, if you've got any questions, uh, I would suggest that you put the questions in the Matrix forum, not in the Steam forum. So, um, so I would ask in there or in the Battlefront forum. One of the one of, in one of those areas. Anyway, that's just sort of just mention that for those of you who do actually have the Battlefront version of the game. I think also if you did have the Battlefront version of the game, you would then be used to paying a little bit extra every time there's a game engine update, uh, just to sort of get to the next version because it's it is essentially. Like we're essentially at, at combat. I think I think it was either Game Engine One or Game Engine Two that uh, where it first, where this one first came out. I've got a feeling it was Game Engine Number One. So essentially, this is uh, Combat Mission Battle for Battle for Normandy Version Four. Is <laughs> I guess one way of uh, of uh, thinking of the way it actually works because of the Game Engine. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, we're going to be playing a quick battle. Uh, and I should point out, the when you actually do get the game, there's lots and lots of different manuals, one for each DLC, one for the actual base game as well. The base game, you tend to play Germans versus US, um, and uh, but there's also a, a big manual there about the actual game engine and the differences with the game engine. So if you're interested, have, just have a, a read of them, put them on a tablet or something, or just PDF files and, and read them uh, you know, to your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> I have skimmed through the whole lot, and it's interesting. I've got to say, it is interesting. So, um, if you're a bit like me, then you'll find that sort of stuff quite quite fascinating. If you're not like me, then you probably find it boring as all hell. But anyway, that's the way it works. Uh, let's go through, and we'll play a quick battle. Now, I have uh, what I'm going to be doing is a meeting engagement. Tiny. I don't want this to last very long, so this will probably be a two, maybe three episode. 
Whenever I say that, it ends up being like a five or six episode uh, series. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Uh, 30 minute length battle um, back and through here. I'm going to choose the map selection. I've got a map in mind that I, I like the look of. So I want to I want to choose that one through there. I can go with a random map if I wanted to. Uh, region uh, France will play as a German army. Combat force of mix. That just means I can have anything I like, which I like. Uh, we'll we'll purchase that ourselves. I've got again. I've sort of figured out what I can afford and what I think I want to actually start this particular map with. So I'm already going in prepared. That way I don't have to waste time. I actually have already recorded all this once before, and um, by the time I got up into the actual game itself, it was already an hour in. So I, I don't. That's why I'm restarting. But at least I know what I'm doing this time. It's, I've already got my plan in in place. Um, force adjustment, no change. Random Allied Defender. We won't know who that actually is. It could be um, US, British, Canadian, Polish. Um, they're, the, uh, they're the Allied forces. Now, you can actually still go up against German versus German, any of the German ones that are actually in there as well. So you've got like a choice, but I've just gone with Random Allied. Again, they can have a choice of everything as well. So they can bring in armor, whatever they want. So not a problem at all. The AI will pick them for it. With a tiny map, it's tending to just going to be infantry, to be honest. It's, there's not going to be too much else that does go on in there. All right, we'll just click on OK. Uh, so the one I want to choose is, if I just go down to next, I'm just going to go through all of these. Now, we're, we've got a meeting, like this is a meeting engagement, so we'll only be given the meeting maps. We won't be given the assault maps. There, there are a whole other range of maps available as well. And I don't want to be playing large. I want to be playing small. And so there's a, so much to choose from in here. Uh, I'm going to be choosing, just go back, the small town with its with its with a church in the middle. I think this looks interesting. It's fairly open. Uh, I was sort of worried about choosing anything that was too built up. But um, uh, like the small open is good. Like you've got others that have got water. You've got bocages as well. So let's just go with this one with a bit of damage to the actual city itself. Uh, so we'll fight this one. Let's just get into it. We'll play as the Axis forces, uh, one player. Now, different ways of playing. I won't go into too much detail about this, but this is the old way of playing it, the original way where you actually plan your move out and then it's a we go system both sides plan their moves he plays out for one minute you can then replay and look at things from all different angles which is what we're going to be doing in this episode i'm going to be sort of having a really close look at what go does go on playing a tiny selection allows us to do that pretty much and that way we'll get a bit of narrative as to what's actually going on with our um with the adventure of what's actually happening in through here so i'll probably almost pause my orders and really, most of the orders are done in the first few turns, and then you should be in position, and you're just then tweaking little things after that point in time. So it's the first couple of turns are quite long, but after that, it does speed up. Um, now, you've got a few different things in here. You've got real time, which is introduced with the engine two, I think. I think that's sort of how it then sort of uh, that then worked. This one here, I don't think I've never played it because I've always just been used to playing the Wego system. I used to play Combat Mission right from when the very, very first one. What was that one? Beyond Overlord, I think, was the first one. Um, used to love that game. God, I loved that game in the day. Uh, it's so much better now, though. <laughs> this, these are more modern versions. Um, the real time, I don't know if you can... I've never played it, but I don't think you can actually replay. Uh, so you can't sort of go back and see what happened in a part of the battlefield you weren't looking at, which for me is a problem. So I, I, I wouldn't like to play it for that one reason. You can, it's still pausable real time. You can still pause, give orders, do whatever you want to do. But I don't think you can go back and, and replay like at the last minute, whereas you can do that with the turn-based. Uh, you've got the PBEM++. This is the Slytherin play-by-email system. Uh, you've got the manual play-by-email, so you can still just sort of shoot your files back and forwards. But the um, the automated one was, is going to sort of just help you um, within the Slytherin system. And they've got a lot of games that use this system, like Field of Glory, all those sort of games a lot of people play. Uh, there's a big active community on Slytherin as well, by the way, uh, for finding games and for finding people to play with and so on and so forth. So if you're wanting to play multiplayer games, then I would suggest being part of that community and playing this way would be good for you. Um, you will be playing the turn-based games with, it, with all of these. You've then got Internet LAN and Hot Seat. We're just going to be playing turn-based, so we'll just click on that one through there. I'm going to be playing Veteran Mode, which I won't go through the, the differences, 
I actually had once thought that it was it was a number of points that the AI gets, but it's actually the realism factor. The um, when you play um, like this, you can see everything. There's no fog of war when you play the author test. This is really designed for people designing scenarios. But if you're learning the game, you may want to think: How did the AI thrash me? Uh, what was it doing? And you could play a game with that turned on just to sort of see what orders the AI gives its forces. That may be of interest to you. Uh, basic training means that there is still all this a fog of war, but it's fairly immediate. When you when one unit sees something, all the units are aware of it. Uh, when you play on veteran, uh, the uh, it's 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 a bit more realistic. The um, there's they've got a command and control aspect to it. So if a unit sees another unit, they'll know where, what unit it is and where it is. They have to then communicate upline. And then that slowly it dissipates through all the different forces that an enemy has been seen and what type of enemy it actually is. So it just gives you that the fog of war is a little bit loose. I'll show you that in game. Anyway, that's veteran. Um, the to bring in an artillery strike is reasonably fast in uh, in veteran. Once you go to warrior, things become more realistic, as in the uh, the, the the time it takes to. Um, to help a, a, an injured comrade it takes a, a realistic amount of time. The uh, time it takes to um, to call in an artillery strike takes a realistic amount of time, so like about 10 minutes or so, which is 10 turns, which is a long time in the game. Uh, and then Elite just takes it up from there. So Elite, you have even less information about the forces you're coming up against, and Iron takes it beyond that. So anyway, Veteran is about my level. I enjoy playing Veteran, so let's just go with that one. You don't get, the, the AI doesn't get more or less points from this by the way. Just click, click on OK and click on OK. In we go. So now we have to choose our forces. Now what I can do is just go and click on suggestions if I wanted to. So I could actually just do this and it's saying, OK, look, I want to bring in an um, Arsbliggs uh, Urchat's Battalion, whatever the hell that is, and a, a two platoon uh, anti-aircraft light. Now I don't want flak panzers. Um, I don't want um, this particular company. What have we got? We've got a rifle platoon so i've just got basic rifle platoons in through there and this one in here this is Osbig dung so i'm not sure what that one actually is so if you even more rifle platoons let's ditch all of that so we're just going to press delete actually one thing i can do i can press suggestions it will then come back up again and i can just go to continue it will then and when i click on suggestions after this it will then start to find other suggestions for me and uh, i've got at certain points over here i can spend so I've got 1,174. The enemy has the same number of points. Uh, now, in through here, if I just keep on clicking, clicking suggestions, I'm going to get different sorts of suggestions coming back in through this side. But we're going to go and uh, we're going to go and build our own. So let's go and get rid of both of these. Delete that one and delete this one. And um, now, when we come in, I'm just going to keep experience, motivation, fitness, leadership all on typical. So we'll just go that way. Uh, I'm going to start with. Um, whether I go infantry only or armoured infantry, I think I might just go, if I go to armoured infantry, the one I'm interested in is this Panzer Divisional Escort Company because it's around about the amount of money that I have. Now, I'm going to tweak it as well. That's 960. If I go to infantry only, the same one there is 960. So they're both the same grouping. Now, if we have a look and see what that's made up of, it's made up of a headquarters team. It's got an escort platoon, and the escort platoon is made up of uh, three rifle squads, three Panzer Shrek teams, which I shouldn't need because we've only got a tiny group. Uh, a machine gun section. Um, it says motorized, but they're actually not motorized. Um, there's no motorization we can sort of see in through here. Two heavy machine guns, a medium mortar, a medium anti tank gun, um, a, 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 a platoon officer back in through there as well. Uh, and then we have a um, another Panzer Grenadiers, uh, three Panzer Grenadier squads with three more Panzer Shrek. So there's, uh, that's sort of the base of what I'm looking for. It's about the same price of what I'm, I've got. If I have a look at a few of the other ones, just as a bit of comparison. So if I look at them at around about a thousand, we've also then got the Regimental Pioneer Company at 800. This is going to give me two Pioneer platoons. The platoons have got three lots of Pioneers. Um, Got motorizing through there, another three, so that's six pioneer squads, a machine gun section with a medium mortar. That's actually not bad as well. Uh, the platoons, the pioneers are more for, uh, demolition type type units. We can mix and match as well. Like I don't have to just go with one, I can sort of take others in. Now these are worth about 199, about 200 each for one of those. If we have a quick look at the um, 
at these guys. The escort platoon is 403. So I'm thinking, and that's also got the machine guns in it. That one there is 245 with the Panzer Shreks. Hmm, okay. I think we might still go this uh, this uh, divisional escort company. This may be just a little bit too specialised for us. Other ones we can have, have a bit of a look at would be the anti-tank company. Now, this is not suitable to us. Medium anti-tank guns, um, two medium anti-tank tank platoons, which we just don't need. So that's basically all that one does. But if we had a much bigger force, we could then bring in specialist groups to do different things. These would be guns. So let's start in here. We're going to purchase that one to get started. Now, as I say, there's things in here I don't want, so I'm going to be a bit, bit picky and choosy. We've got three platoons. We've got a, an escort uh, motorized, we've got an anti-tank medium, and we've got a, um, a the uh, Ulfrung Alf, motorized, which is the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Let's just open them all up so we can see all three. Now, we don't need pack guns in this particular, because we're playing a tiny game, this is no longer required. So let's ditch all of this. This is for 341, so we'll delete that. So platoon two is gone. The um, now I do need to get like a, a. I don't know whether I should take any Panzerschrecks in there at all. The machine gun section is, and we've got a mortar section through there as well. Now we've got a uh, the mortar section is coming in at 94. We've got uh, medium mortar in through that side. This is um, I might ditch that actually and change this one around a little bit. Oh, actually, this is on map. If we go off map, I want to just test the, the off map. We've got two, two by 81 uh, mortars back in through there. The headquarters can call these in. So that's actually sort of where we are with everything there. Uh, so that will be two, two off, off map mortars. We'll leave them where they are. The, um, yeah, we've got two machine gun units as well. That's actually fine. We'll just leave them where they are for now. Let's ditch the Panzer Shreks from here. So we'll just delete all three of those and leave them where they are. Um, we've now got, we're only down to, we've got 520 remaining. So we've only spent 654 now once we've got rid of all of these. The Panzer Shreks in here may be useful, just on the off chance. But what I think I want to do is I want to bring in uh, vehicles so we can actually start getting to the town quickly. I might ditch all of these. I might just go and get maybe two of these back in. So we'll just revive that one and this one here, just for now. So we'll just bring in two Panzer Shreks in with the rifle squads. The uh, Now for the Panzer Grenadiers, I just want to get a couple of these into town fast. So we'll, um, we'll head them in uh, with, now they're worth 48 for the standard rifle squads. So they're actually, they're actually worth a bit more than the Panzer Grenadiers. I think it depends on the quality. If we have a look at this one here, this one's uh, high motivation but regular. This is um, it's still regular there, so it's still the same same deal. Oh, this one's got a um, a plus two leadership, so it's got higher leadership, which is sort of then pushing it up. We may have to change that. All right. So anyway, we've got a bit a bit to spend. Let's go now. Go for, from fortifications down to single vehicles. Uh, we'll go to armored infantry. This will then give us the. Um, the the, uh, the wagons, so the um, SPW 250, 251-1s. Now, I don't want to be going and spending too much in the way of the rarities. I don't need to. Uh, the D is going to be better anyway, so that one's still 68. So we want to bring in a couple of these, but I'm going to change these from regular to green, which will then change the price down to 62. So let's go and add in uh, inside the Panzer Grenadier. Let's get two of those. And for the machine gun section, let's go and open that one up. I want to get the machine guns into position fairly quickly. So let's go and bring one of those in as well. So that's the um, that's this one in through this side. Um, let's get that one normal. And uh, green again. And we'll purchase that to go into that particular grouping. Now... There's, the machine guns have got like a six-man team. These can carry 10, I think. I think it's 10 or 11 that they can actually carry. So it's not going to be enough to carry both machine gun teams. So we'll have to uh, do other things, but we'll, we'll get to that when we actually get there. Uh, Panzer Shrek, we've still got 380 left to spend. Let's have a look at the tanks. So we'll go to armor. And we'll just, just get ourselves... I like the idea of getting this 
uh, Panzer tank here, this 331. So we're just going to grab that one. I'm going to put that one right up in the headquarters. So that's going to be part of the headquarters group. So we'll just go to the um, the Panzer 5G in through there, and we'll purchase. So it's now just going to be part, an extra part of the actual headquarters platoon. I could could use it as part of the Panzer Grenadiers. Maybe I'll do that instead. Let's just delete that one and just select the um, the third platoon, and uh, we'll throw it in there. So we'll throw it in with these guys. Um, they do have the half tracks after all, so we'll just not that it matters that much to be honest with what we're doing here. So we we'll just go to the Panzer 5G purchase. Now I do probably want this one if I can get up to close to the 380. Uh, if we go to veteran, it's 385. Leadership goes down. If I go to zero, it's 406. Just go back to regular. It's 371. It's very very close. Uh, that'll do. Okay, I'll just I'll just bring this one in. So we'll bring that one in as part of this particular grouping. So um, there we are. We've got eight or nine points left over. Let's have a bit of a look. Um, it's probably going to ultimately be things like the machine gun team. So we've got this one here is regular, but minus two. If we make that one zero, that gives us down to three. So that just makes it a little bit better. The um, the heavy machine gun in through here is negative one. Let's make that one zero. That's right on zero. So we've now spent all of our points um, and we've got ourselves a nice little grouping. That will actually do us. Let's get into the game. So with that selected, this is our order of battle. It's going to be uh, one company consisting of of um, of two platoons. Um, the so we've got the first and the third. The second platoon has been taken out of this particular grouping. The first platoon is rifle squads with a, with a heavy machine gun group with limited uh, and also the two off off map uh, mortars that can then call in. The uh, the third platoon now the only people who can actually call in these are the headquarters teams. There's um, three headquarters teams that can be called on to actually do it. So we're going to have to position them very, very carefully. We don't have any forward observers with the group that we actually have. So we'll just go in with these. Uh, we will click on OK. And the map will then load. There we go. We've got a briefing in here. Let's just skip past this. We, there's nothing much it's going to tell us. We'll just click on OK. And so here we are. Now, I'm just going to put the trees back to default. I'm going to just go through very, very, very quickly um, different keyboard commands. I'm just going to open them up and just and show you where they are. I'm going to click on menus, and I'm going to click on hotkeys. So the important ones for moving the, the camera around, W, A, S, D, and, and D. Uh, Q and E are useful. Uh, they are quite handy. The uh, V key reverses the direction. That's handy as well. Uh, raise and lower, I don't tend to worry too much about. Zoom in and zoom out is actually quite nice if you're tr trying to sort of look at a particular angle or to a particular detail, you can actually sort of zoom right in using X and then zoom back out using Z uh, the, or Z if you're from America. <laughs> uh, the wide angle is C, which is also very, very useful. We'll see that in just a minute. Uh, you've got the preset camera positions one to, through to nine. You tend to use one through to five uh, more so than the top down view. You do have a top down view from six up to nine. I'll show you all those in just a second. The arrow keys allow you to fine tune the camera, which essentially is like doing a, a right click. Um, where is it? So we've got uh, yeah, right click and drag is pivot. Sort of the same deal with the arrow keys. The arrow keys feel a little bit nicer. It, it, the, the, the right clicking does get a little bit unwieldy at times. Uh, other things that are useful, tab will lock the camera to a unit. Um, uh, deleting last waypoint is backspace. Just go back to the hot keys if you get lost at all. A few important ones back over through here. Uh, toggle trees. You've got three different toggle settings. So uh, the toggle trees, this is the default with the trees turned on. Uh, if I just go and click through here, so Alt T, well, the next one gets rid of trees entirely. And then the next one just leaves the trunks. So there's the three different styles. I like to just leave the trunks. Uh, when I'm planning things out because I then get a feel for what's going on. I can then sort of see the town, I can see things that, that through the actual trees. We can see the forest for the trees. <laughs> anyway, let's just go back into the uh, menus again. Uh, hot keys, and so that's an important one, toggle trees. The next one we want to look at is the uh, toggle to show all moving paths. Now I've got that toggled on anyway, that's Alt P. 
Uh, I don't like it when if, if I go to the edge of the uh, into the screen, I don't want the screen to then start to sort of move the camera around. So I actually un toggle I toggle that one off the um, the uh, toggle edge uh, screen edge camera movement. I don't like it, so I turn that one off. Um, now the other ones that you may want to do if if you're playing in dawn, dusk, or night, you may want to do Alt B just to artificially brighten the map so you can see what's going on. Otherwise, it's very very dark, and that's about it. Um, of the important ones really there are other things like there's some interesting ones with the mouse wheel mouse wheel allows you to elevate uh, if you use shift it's elevate and pitch and if you use just control it's just pitch so by that if I move up and then press control I can then sort of look sort of down on my units or up in the sky so I can sort of get a different angle if I press shift I then sort of rotate around a point and start to sort of look look further down so that's a good one just for getting fine fine tuned movements the arrow keys allow you to then sort of just do a little bit of up and down as well. So you can use the arrow keys to sort of do the same thing uh, with that. The, the, the arrow keys are quite handy. WASD will then sort of move you around the actual battlefield. Uh, if we move forward and then press the V, we then look back the other way where we came. V will then turn it back again so we can sort of have a look whichever way we want to look at. The actual map itself, if we press number one, we're down at, at eye level of the actual troops. Number two, we're up sort of at at, um, at the level of the tanks, I guess, so, you know, just a bit above where they are. Now, remember, again, you can just use your scroll wheel to sort of go further down or further up. And again, you can just use the arrow keys to start to sort of zoom and have a look up in the sky or to, uh, to look back down again. So you've got like a, a fairly fine controls over what you're sort of looking at through there. So you've got like a, a range of different sorts of things that you can sort of then go and do. Um, okay, Z and X, like X will allow me to sort of zoom right in and Z will allow me to zoom back out. Uh, number key, so number one is, is that level. Number two is a little bit higher. Number three is a bit more, you can start to sort of get a bit more of a feel for the actual map itself. Four, you're starting to sort of see actual terrain, but you're not seeing the, the nuances of the, of the divots in the ground. And that everything is modeled in this game incredibly accurately. So bullets actually uh, fire and then sort of uh, dive and drop a little bit. So just be aware of that. Uh, so that's four. Five is even more sort of top down. And then you've got like six, seven and eight, which is a nine, which essentially are just top down views of the whole map. So five can be fairly useful for, for a medium sized maps to be able to then sort of see what's going on. Now, there's one more sort of command that can be useful to see what's going on as well. That's the C key, which gives you a, um, a wide angle. So the wide angle can be a nice way to, um, to just sort of see what's going on. The way we'll be playing the game is I'll be giving orders ultimately in close and figuring out what to do. And then I'll be coming back out, playing the whole turn uh, from this angle through here and, uh, and then essentially going through and... Um, uh, and then going in detail and looking at anything that's of interest. So we're going to be sort of rewinding and rewinding a little bit as we, whenever we sort of see anything that does take take place. I'll try to explain my thought process. I'll try to make it, this as, as fun as possible. There are still some things that I wish the game did do. Um, there's a few settings I would love it to do. I don't think there's any there that we can actually do anything. If we go across to menu, there's no settings we can change in through here, unfortunately. Um, one thing I would love would be to have an auto save of the replays, uh, so you can go back, retro, like you know, deeper back into the into the replays to see what actually happened. I would love that in the game, but this doesn't actually. It's maybe in in, um, in Game Engine Five. Who knows? <laughs> that would be really really awesome. But it's a it's a very very good good game. The way it sort of does work, and as I say. Yeah, the game, version one of the game, came, or, you know, engine one or two, whichever one it was, came out like 12 years ago, but we're now really at version four of the game and and beyond with this new version. So anyway, we're going to, our forces, the AI has split our forces into two different groups through here. I'm going to spread them out a bit more and sort of try to figure out what's going, what it's going to go on. If I have a bit of a look at the map, we can see that this looks like a bit of a high point in through this side. Uh, from here, we have reasonable angles all the way through into that forest so i probably want to have my tank actually sort of take control in through there can i hide the tank hiding the tank is going to be hard um it would almost be worth having the tank in here maybe that's the spot for the tank looking down this way that's a bit of a hard one even back it, it, i've got to try to protect it uh once we start getting shot at this is not 
high enough for us to uh, to make good use of. Initially, I could actually do that. Oh, maybe it, maybe I just move it straight into here, just right from the very very start. Now, tanks should be able to smash their way through um, low walls like this, so they sh that shouldn't really worry them. It may be a bit of a concern, but we'll. Um, it can only break through bocage like these these tall air these tall ones in through here if it's got the um, if it's got the Rhino equipment on the front and the German tanks don't have that. So I'm going to move this one down into the next uh, into the next uh, area. So let's just move it down into here. And I want to sort of have it so I've got an angle through there. So I'll just go and um, position this one to do that. When all I do is I've selected the actual tank in through this uh, this area. And I'm just going to go and press N, which is the, if I go back to the, my movement commands, if I just click back on menus and then have the, mo the movement command selected, N is your standard move. So I'm just going to go N, I'm just going to position that one right there, and I'm just going to go pressing G, which under combat is facing. So, so G, you get used to these keyboard shortcuts, so they're, they're pretty standard. There's a few that, are, that you use an awful lot. So the ones that you use a hell of a lot is move, quick and fast. Uh, slow and hunt as well a little bit, but you can always find them anyway. Uh, reverse you use a lot with, with tanks and so on and so forth. Uh, combat facing is important, very, very important. Sometimes you'll you'll restrict the arc of fire for certain units so that they actually don't they fire at a certain range, but, but not further than that. So that's quite useful. We, we'll do that during this particular playthrough. Hide is very, very useful for your infantry uh, at different times. So we'll definitely make use of that one. Um, there's also other things that do come in here. There's one in here which is actually to assemble. We do have machine guns, so we'll have to assemble the machine guns when we actually get in somewhere close. And I'm thinking this area here looks like a very, very good field of fire. If we just get down low, what can they see from in here? Actually, they don't see too much, do they? It's a bit. It's, there's a bit of a lip there. They see a little bit, but we'll be wanting to take over this zone. So maybe we go for straight for the church. And uh, or we put the machine gun in here, so we pop the machine gun in this uh, petrol station. That gives them a really, really good field of fire through there. So that's a great spot for a machine gun. And the other spot for the machine gun, probably on the other side. So I might just sort of run that one down into here somewhere, just so we've got sort of like a an angle maybe through one of these other areas. All right, so let's let's uh, consider that. So we're just planning ahead a little bit in here. Um, now we're half an hour in. Let's just go back and press number three again. So that's given us at least that, that one there. What I might do is I might just pause and come back when I've actually gone through everything. By the way, we've still got our... Uh, like if we go down, the very first unit that was selected, which was the guy in the corner here, this one here happens to be our, um, our company HQ. So you always start off with the company HQ selected. You can always just go back to the, uh, to the leadership areas, the formation, and then go and highlight, the, say, the first platoon. So this is the commander of the first platoon. Just to explain a few little things that we're sort of seeing through here. This commander has got a radio. It's also got binoculars, so he can do the, um, the spotting. We do actually have the, um, the, the uh, uh, artillery off, like, you know, they're basically sort of off the, uh, off the map at the moment. Uh, so we've got those, and these guys can actually go and, and deal with those. Other normal units can't do that. Like if I go and grab one of these units, uh, this will this will be denied to them. They don't. They can't just go and, and pick up a. Um, they can't direct in where this thing's going to come back in. Now at the start of the game, I can actually call this one in to a to a particular zone. So I think I can anyway. So I'll, I'll double check that and make sure that we can actually do that. Uh, that will be another thing we'll get doing. Um, so and if you'll notice that when I highlight a particular group like this, it highlights everyone in, in associated with that group. So that's all been highlighted. There may be some units up this way that are part of it. Yeah, there are. There's another little group of machine guns back up this side as well that are actually being designated as part of that particular group. So we'll come back and actually sort of deal with them in just a minute. Um, so they're actually all part of that particular group. This looks like the other section. This is the third platoon HQ. Uh, again, this one can also call in the actual uh, mortars. Uh, if it needs to. So we'll think about where they go, but I'll just pause this now and I'll come back when I've actually got everyone set up. And I've, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them their orders. I might I might sh come back in when I'm starting to give orders. I'm just going to th think it through in my head and then just explain what my thought process is. OK, 
Okay, so let's actually now just have a look at our forces and I'll just go explain a little bit more about what's going on. I've now moved my main commander back up into here. This is the escort command HQ. I want this person like back a little bit, um, maybe with some vision looking down this way. So I'll put him up into the into this area of uh, into into there. He is I just don't want him fairly I just want him fairly central, but also to be able to uh, call in uh, the mortars if we have to. Now when the game first starts, we've got a free use of the mortars, so I might as well use him to bring the mortars in. He's got a radio, so he can actually call the mortars in, essentially in binoculars. So he is like a forward observer. The other commanders will have the same thing, but the normal guys won't. So they've got binoculars, but they don't actually they can't call in any of the strikes. So uh, so if we had a, an actual forward observer team, they would also be able to do this. But anyway, I'll use our main commander to do this first one. All we do to call in the in this strike is we've got to think, okay. Well, where is the most likely area that the AI will come? Like, where will they sort of send their forces? There's forest in here, so they'll probably make use of the forest. There's uh, there's cover all the way through into here, with these different uh, these these different areas. There's cover all the way here. So I'm thinking by the time I need to be attacking him, it's either in here or it's in here. Whoops. Sorry about that. Some, that was someone at the door. Anyway, I'm assuming it's going to be one of these two areas. So I think we might hit this area in through here. There's some openings. So when they're moving between the um, between the the buildings, now it's probably going to take them a few minutes to get there. I would think so, maybe three minutes. So let's go and plan that. We've got our we've got one of the groups that can actually call in because they've got the radio. So they've got the radio in through there. Uh, they are in radio contact anyway in the upline. So their upline is in radio contact. If we had to put that into context, we're now a little bit further away uh, with the different units. So this unit in through here is actually still technically in, in contact range. So he's actually in, uh, in speaking range and visual range of that unit. Uh, this one over through here is on, in a vehicle and he is actually in radio contact with the platoon commander. So that's actually the way it works. So this is our third platoon HQ. That's our uh, first platoon HQ. He's actually just in direct communication. This one over through here is in radio communication upline. So that's sort of how these those little symbols there, that's the, the comms uh, that we sort of get to see. Now things like, for example, the tanks, uh, this one is in radio communication at this point in time. Um, it's uh, it, when it's when we see the green little dots, it means that it is in communication all the way through. So this one here won't have anything because he's in charge of everything. This guy in here is in communication, easy communication with the um, with the commander. Again, we can sort of have a look and, see, and have a look at any of them. Some of them will may have a little cross next to them if they're too far away. Have a look at the furthest ones. Here, yeah, this one here. So this guy in through here is actually supposed to be in communication with his commander who is way down over here. And so he doesn't actually have any communication uh, back back to that particular group. So he's sort of just going to be given his orders, he's going to have to fill, fill the orders, and then hopefully get back in communication at some point. It just means that when he is trying to um, uh, use command and control and actually sort of give information about what he's seeing, it's going to be slow getting back to the rest of the group because of that lack of communication. So it's important to sort of know that that's going on. Anyway, we were going to be doing the uh, the mortars. So we'll just go and select one of our forward observers or our HQs, either one of them. Uh, we're going to then go and click on the, uh, on the area through here. And essentially for each piece of artillery, we can then call in a, uh, a strike uh, at the very start of the game. We, if we leave it, if we don't do it immediately in the setup phase, we then lose the, uh, it then has to have time to um, to establish itself. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to waste time. So we're going to go and grab this. We've got three different types of, uh, of things we can do. A point target is basically, it's just going to hit a particular area, like it's going to pinpoint an area. If we had like a, a building that we knew was full of enemy troops, then a point target would be good. An area target is just going to sort of target a particular area. I'm thinking I'll target this area here. So that would be good. A linear target starts and marches. So it starts at one end and just starts to sort of move its way through in a line. So, but we'll just go area target. Now, I need to have um, visual uh, on the actual areas other than the setup phase. In the future, I need to actually be able to see what's going on. So if we are over here, I should be able to, in, in, like in high up. So you want to get your commanders fairly high. Like even over here would actually be not too bad for one of the commanders uh, because you can then sort of see down into this region, which would be quite nice. So I need to sort of think, 
think of these things when I'm trying to plan where my commander's going to go. That's not a bad. That's not a bad spot actually. I might get him uh, high up. In maybe even in this building over here, because he can then sort of see, he should be able to still see reasonably well into that region. Anyway, we'll we'll still set this thing up. So we'll uh, we'll just go across, and then I'll I'll remove where he goes. Let's go and position this one just in here somewhere. So we'll just sort of uh, strike the target. Now I'm guessing guys on foot are probably going to be there in say three or four minutes. So we'll just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe three minutes. Let's go and and click. The first click is where it's going to actually go. So the target. And then we have to then make it how big it's going to be. Now, uh, I'll make it. If I make it too big, it's going to um, not do enough damage. I might just keep it. I might keep it to there. So this is a diameter of 60 meters. So we'll just go that side. Actually, it went a little bit smaller in the end. Uh, 50 meters is where it ended up being. Now the guns. I'm going to use both of the mortars for when I do want to have it. So I'm just going to put both of them in there. Now the actual how how much we want to be placing in there. I can put smoke down as well, by the way, if I'm wanting to move through a particular area. I can then plan a smoke uh, barrage to just cover up an area for me. But in this case, I'm going to um, go with, I uh, say, a medium. So we've got uh, we've got a hundred high explosive um, uh, mortars that we can sort of that we can lob in. But let's just do a medium barrage. Uh, the duration, I'll make this one a medium duration as well. The effect will just be general and into here. And the delay, um, delivery will be less than one minute. Now that's going to be two, two um, I might make it, I'm going to have to make it five minutes. Five minutes if I do, if I cancel that and just do that again. Just do area target again. Four meters this time both guns medium duration will be medium as well uh, immediate it's probably going to be all over and if I do it immediately it's, it's gonna I think I'm gonna have to do five minutes so delivery will happen in, in on turn five so we've got this one now established so that's where we are we'll confirm so that will then sort of be in there now what I can do is I can tweak this a little bit so I can give um, other orders. So I can go back in and still click on this one. And I can either do ceasefire or can do other things like that as well. So I can actually sort of change things around a little bit once the game is actually sort of started. Anyway, that's where that one is. So it's coming from him. I'm going to move him up uh, while he's doing this and have him come back through to this building here, I think. Um, so let's just go and, and press N and move him up that way. And we're going to run him down. So he's going to actually have to just jog. So we now start to give the specific orders of what we want these guys to do. So I want him to quickly run into this building. So I'm just pressing the I key. So quick to level two. And then when he gets up to level two, I want him to hide. I'm just going to press H, which is under the special command. So H in through there. So he's going to run and hide. That way he'll have vision. And we want to then protect, make sure he's protected. So that's going to be what he does. He is still calling that strike in as he runs. So he's going to jog. I essentially this means jog. That means sprint. Sprint. He'll be exhausted if he if he was sprinting all that distance. Uh, now the next thing we want to do is we want to have this guy also just jog his way down into this into the bottom area of this one. So we want to be protecting what's going on. And um, I'm going to give him an order to look out. Uh, towards this field. So I'm just going to press G, which is the one to look out through there. And I'm going to set this one up as well. Um, I can do different things where I can do like a target arc. The, this is quite useful. I think I'll just leave it there. He can actually then fire at whatever, whatever he can see. I'll just leave it open so he can actually fire. Sometimes it's worth, like if I do a, a, an arc, if I sort of say, okay, look, the arc target, I'm going to go with, um, uh, which way should we do it? Let's just go and say, say anything that sort of goes from there. Oh, hang on, this is, I shall do that when, when we're there. I'm just doing a right click. If I click on that one when he's when it's selected, this is where he's going to end up. Then we'll do the target. So we'll then just sort of do the target. Yeah, 60 meters, That's that looks better. I thought, the, I thought that looked a bit sort of strange. Let's just go in through here and just do an arc target uh, back out through that side. 
at this point in time. So he'll just cover anything he can see running through that particular area. Might just make that a little bit bigger, actually. Um, let's go from there, just out, just in case anyone does sort of get in, like starts to close in behind us. So he'll look after the um, after the commander. So that will be sort of his orders. Uh, on the ground floor. Now we also have a Panzer Shrek as well, and I'm going to put the Panzer Shrek up top, I think. I may change it. I'm just going to right click that sort of then deselects. Uh, by the way, I've got the Alt P, Alt P, which if I get have one selected, I can then see what everyone's doing. Uh, but with the Panzer Shrek in through here, now. Do we want to move that over there? We probably don't, you know. I think I might move him back down into this area. Now we want to get a machine gun into this building over this side this um, and set that one up so we've got a field of fire straight through that corridor there. And uh, what we have inside this one is, is we've, got a, um, we've got a machine gun inside. If I just go back and say press number one or number two, uh, what we have is our machine gun group is sitting inside this particular uh, vehicle. And when I click on it, we can then sort of see that it's chewing up six of the slots in the back. We've got the driver plus the six machine gunners sitting in there. We can squeeze another five in there. So I can actually put five more units in there if I wanted to. Now at this point in time, um, if I go to this machine gun group, it's got six units. So six units in through there. I can't fit that one in there. I do actually have another Panzer Grenadier group in through here. It's using up the majority of its what it actually has. So this one in here has got the... Um, uh, this one here has got like a... Um, a Panzer Grenadier group of eight units. And so we have three left over there. What I might do is I might go and grab that Panzer Shrek, which is uh, over here, which only consists of two men. And I'm gonna put that in that vehicle. So he can squeeze into there. So we're just gonna press N. And then when I click on the vehicle, I can then just click it and hit, they're now in there as well. So we've now got the Panzer Shrek and the, uh, the Panzer Grenadier group in there. So that's actually works in fairly well. And we can do the same thing over here as well. In fact, have we already got? I've already got a commander in there as well. So we've got a commander. Uh, we're full. This this particular uh, vehicle is full. So we're going to have a commander going back in with this one as well. Uh, the rest of the guys are on their feet. So that's sort of setting up who's in the vehicles, just to set them up. So we're going to sort of just press G and move that one through that side. Now these are both going to go off uh, and sort of get in each other's way to a degree. So we're going to need to sort of stagger what they do. The most important one for us is actually the machine gun. In fact, we want to get this machine gun into one of these vehicles. Hmm. Okay. And probably this vehicle down in here. I'm just going to press N and bring it down ready to go in. So the six in there have to squeeze into this one in here. Let's bring this one out. So we'll just press N and just move the uh, commander over there. That's That leaves only three slots available. Let's go back to the Panzer Grenadier and uh, press N and just move them back in through there. Now, this is another concept in the game. Let's just place that one. It's more important that I get these. You'll see through there, It's the deployment time is only eight seconds, which is pretty fast. But I need to get it into position and I need to have other troops around it to protect it. So we're going to run up the other troops to help out anyway. But let's just go and place this one in because I want to have this one ready to go. So they're now inside the vehicle before we get started. Uh, we've got this Panzer Grenadier group that I do want to have go in. Now we've got two sections, two um, two squads inside the patrol, in, inside this, sorry, there's, um, there's, this is the second squad, but it's got two patrols essentially back in through there. This one over through here has got a five and a four um, with just basic rifles. Uh, we do actually have a Panzer Forst in there as well. When I hover over these things, we can then sort of, usually you can sort of see who it is that would actually have it. Actually, it must be, that's a machine gun there. Um, I might use this squad actually in this group with this machine gun. So what I can do is I can split the squads up and, and then put half a squad in. So let's go and do that. In fact, there's the Panzer Forced on the back of those two guys there. So we can sort of see them with what they've got. Um, so what we'll do is we'll grab this particular group and we will go to admin and split the teams up. Now we have two teams. We have uh, A team and we have B team. And so I'm going to send A team, which has got the two Panzer Forsts, 
uh, basic sort of stuff in through there. I'm going to place them because there's five in there and we still have five slots left over. So let's go and move them up with this particular group. So we're just going to press um, N and then with the, with the down arrow, place them in there. And now this particular uh, wagon is also now full. So we're now full of different units. I hope that makes sense. It's um, cool the way it does work. Anyway, we want this to race along the road. This is um, this is, does actually have a dirt road. Now, when you do have roads, try to imagine what you would do if you were driving a vehicle. Like, would you scream along this dirt road or would you be fairly sedate? Now, um, in this case, it's an actual road. So I think we just go fast. So let's get this particular group into where we want them as fast as we can. Let's just press number three, just so we can sort of uh, control this one. So I'm just going to press F, which is B. So I'm just going to press the B. I'm going to just designate it to uh, to get quickly to there. Then I'm going to go through the through the uh, town. Uh, we're going to go to there, and we want to get over into here. This is going to mean that we're going to have to go in front of the church. Now again, we've still got all roads, but we've got a. It becomes a little bit more. There's there's damage done to the road there. So let's um, let's race into here. Let's change it now and slow down when we come into this region because this is going to be fairly hard to um, to manoeuvre through. So let's just go and move past these where we can potentially damage our vehicle. So we'll just go and uh, position ourselves there, and we'll just turn around a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. And uh, we then want to get the machine gun we really want to have into here. So I'm just going to just keep it moving into this side um, and then and then back into here somewhere. And uh, that should be we don't we can't tell how far that will be in one turn, but we should be close after one turn getting those into that particular into that particular location. So that's a, a good start for us. Uh, we then just right click. So that one's now been given its orders. And I can then just go through and start to set all the others up. Now, this Panzer Grenadier group, I want this one to um, just be close to the edge. And I want this one to jog. So just I, I don't want it to be exhausted. I want it to jog up and then be in with the other group. So I want this one to jog into this particular building. So um, that way it'll be, or it might even go into this building here. Like we've got the other groups that will be there. Let's go and get it to go to level one. So down low and... I'm going to tell it initially just to hide. So I'm just going to, once it goes there, just press H. That way it won't it won't actually get too involved, but it's going to take it a fair few turns to get there because it's on foot. The other one we've got the other half squad. We've got Team B uh, with four units, including a uh, an MG42, and we're going to now run this one up into this one over through here. So we're just going to go. I could actually place it over here as well. Maybe maybe I do that just to sort of stop anything that might come through this field. We do actually have this force in here. I might do that actually. Let's just go and press um, uh, I. So this is just going to be uh, jogging into this location, just on the inside there, and they'll just they'll just stay hidden into that particular area. I'll let them shoot, so that will do for them. So that's that group done. Uh, then we've got the other commander that's back in through here. This is the third platoon HQ. Um, now. I'll be wanting them ultimately to get close to town. So I'm just going to go and get him to also then jog into town. Um, I might get him to jog. I'm, I'm going to need someone in the steeple, but I'm going to probably want to have somebody in one of the vehicles go into there if I can. I only want to be protecting these machine gunners at the start. So let's just go across and I've got no other. Again, I want to, I want to get up high. I might tell it to go into this building here. This gives us a good vision of everything. So let's just go up to level two and hide. Again, I want these to be able to call in uh, different other bits and bits and pieces. Then we've got a, um, a rifle squad back and through this side. We've got another rifle squad that side. Uh, that leaves the Panzer Grenadiers to race forward into this other side of the of the map. So we'd be wanting these to jog towards where the where the church is. So let's go into here, level one, and uh, I'll let that one sort of start firing when it gets there. The, um, the Panzer Shrek is not really all that important to us at this stage. We'll just go back in. I might send that up the steeple. So I'll just press I, and we'll go up to level eight and tell it to hide as well. Now, we may send someone else up there in the meantime, but we'll just do that. 
Uh, whoever's up there is not going to last long, I don't think. Uh, we'll get this one to jog into the front of the church. Level 1, and I'll get that one to hide as well initially. I might put two groups in there. That's a very, very central and important uh, location. This group in here, this is the first platoon HQ. Um, now I've got, I've already got one over there. I think I will send this one into the middle here. So I'm just going to press I, run up to this one. I've only got level one there, so I'll just I'll leave it there for now, and hide. With the uh, I, want, I definitely want my commanders to not be firing. They don't have very much anyway. Now this one here we haven't done anything with. This has got the um, this guy's still got space available. Might uh, might change things here. I'll just press backspace. You know, it's, we've got we've got um, five there. I could use the half squad there, but I, I don't think I will. I think I'll actually. Um, I think I might use this commander actually, because we're going to ultimately be close to here anyway with the others with the other group. So I'm going to go and press backspace there. I should have left the other one where it was going to go. And I'll just press N and place him inside there. That then fills up this particular vehicle. This is by far the most important one to get up to the location. So again, I don't want to be going super fast because we're now going across rough ground. I'm going to go quick though with these. I'm just going to sort of bypass the um, the broken ground a little bit, uh, move it up, and um, and get it close to where we need to be, which is going to be in here. And then we we'll sort of, um, and then we we'll just sort of press N and just move up and park in behind that that uh, that area. That will then allow us to then bring out the um, the vehicles. Now I won't actually have them dismount just yet. I'll do. I'll, they'll, they'll, they'll be sort of close there towards the end of that one. Now this one I don't want this one to get in the way of this. This is by far the most important one. So I'm just going to go across and tell it to pause, which is under special. It's just the P. So I just go P. And I'll get it to pause for, say, 10 seconds. That'll give it 10 seconds for this one to get ahead of it. And then we'll just do the same thing. We'll just go I and start to then move it along the same path. So it will, it will then follow this one in. Now, when it gets to there, we'll probably just want to sort of uh, move in. And we want to now move this one up into this sort of location. And then let's just go and, um, and position this one down in here somewhere. So I'm just pressed N just to do it like a normal movement in behind the church. That way I get uh, these two groups back in through there as well. Need to now change this one again just to jog into the steeple. So I, level eight, and hide. All right, so um, it does take a while sort of setting all these things up. I thought I'd just sort of go through the thought process. Uh, we've got those actually now running forward. I want this one to start to move quickly. So again, I can just go back to my movement, just press I. Again, we're not in the uh, we're not on roads, so we'll just move this one across, and um, and what we want to do through here is actually essentially smash our way through here, and uh, up to that point. Then we'll just go slow, or uh, we can just go um, either slow or just move. I'll just go move. That way we can sort of break through this area through this side, and then we can sort of come back down. And that way we're just going to be just popping out the other side of this area. So we'll just move that down into there. That way we've got the protection of the of the building. And that is it. And that's uh, nearly an hour, actually, just to sort of get us to this point. And now the game will sort of start to play off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to save this so that I've actually got, just in case anything does go wrong, I can then save where I am. And this is going to be uh, Daz 000. Uh, just click on OK there. And so turn zero, uh, everything is now set. Everyone has got the orders. To, oh, by the way, to, to double check it, what I can do is just press the, um, the the equal sign and just go through from unit to unit and just make sure that it does highlight. If I want to just, if I can't tell what's going on, if I just press five, uh, I can then sort of start to see if things are done. If I do Alt P, it will be just if the unit that I have selected has got anything, it will then just highlight that particular unit. So as I go through each actual unit, that one there, I think that one's in a vehicle actually. Or is it? Yeah, it was, actually. So we'll just go back through. That one's okay. 
So if I just go minus, I can then go back. So it's part of that vehicle. I don't need to tell it to go and do anything. Uh, that one's okay. That one's okay. It's in a vehicle, moving, moving, uh, vehicle, moving, vehicle, vehicle, moving, moving, vehicle, moving, and moving at the top there. Okay, and vehicle, vehicle, and then the tank is the last one. So that's got everyone. Okay, that's all good. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. So we'll get this one started and sort of see how it, how it all works. And then we'll um, be into the actual battle in the next, in the next round. So I'll uh, catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.